Minnesota. Jason Beard, the 5'11 small forward, redshirt junior out of Midwest City, Oklahoma, by way of UTRGV. And then Kaylee Jones, a 6'2 senior out of Murray, out of California, and Peyton Williams, a 6'4 junior out of Topeka, and Care Paravel Latin. Jeff Mitty in his fifth year, now 82 and 55, is the leader of the Wildcats, assisted by Brian Osterman, Chris Carr, and JC Stone. Princeton will go with Carly Littlefield, the 5'9 sophomore from Waikiki, Illinois, uh, Iowa. Ray Stone, the 5'11 freshman out of Glen Cove, New York. Julia Cunningham, a 5'11 freshman out of Watchung, New Jersey. And Gabrielle Rush, a 5'10 senior out of Hinsdale, Illinois. And then Sydney Jordan, 6'0 senior out of Manassas, Virginia. As you notice there, only one player at 6' foot on the floor to begin for Princeton. They are very small. Kira Insbo, the only player over 6'1 on the entire roster that's active. Insbo, a backup 6'5 setter. Courtney Bangart is the head coach of Princeton in her 12th year, the all-time winningest coach there. 233 wins, 98 losses, coming off nine straight postseason appearances. Randy Peterson alongside. What do you have for the keys to victory for the Wildcats here tonight? Well, Kate State's going to need to handle the fatigue. They've played two teams before today that like to get the ball up and down the floor. Kate State's going to need to be able to handle this next 40 minutes here and focus in. Second, Kate State's going to need to win on the boards. They they won the battle of the boards yesterday against DePaul, but were unable to take advantage of his second chance points. K-State against a smaller team starting lineup here for Princeton. K-State needs to assert themselves on the glass. And finally, K-State needs to limit transition points. In the first two games down here in Cancun, K-State has allowed 30 fast break points. Before that, K-State had allowed zero to the first three opponents in Bramlage. Now we'll see if K-State can correct it. Now the poll obviously spiked that a little bit, plus the press of Syracuse. K-State wins the opening tip, and they'll work from right to left. Princeton in their home all orange uniforms. So kind of like a color rush night here in this morning game. Beard in the lane going up for a shot against Jordan is fouled on the wrist as she goes for a jump shot at the free throw line. Man-to-man -man defense by Princeton and Beard to the free throw line to shoot a pair. A well, good start for K-State as they try to funnel the offense into the post. But and have a serious size advantage inside and Beard to the strike. And we've seen this season already with Beard that she's able to elevate so much higher than the defender on her, her jump mid-range jump shots. I think a lot of teams kind of kind of miss understand how just how high she can really get on that. Misses the first free throw, a little flat, comes back, hits the second. K-State with the lead, one nothing here. At the outset, and now the Cats will fade back into the defense. We heard Jeff Betty say it could be a little bit of man-to-man -man defense today, and that is indeed what the Wildcats open up in. Pass underneath the little field, looking down to the post, guarded by Kayla Goff. She'll back out of it. Littlefield is the one you have to keep an eye on if you're K-State. She's the one that can really pop from anywhere. Littlefield has it on the wing, driving into the paint, kicks out to the right side. Drive here by Cunningham, the freshman, back out to Littlefield, and fouled as she goes up for the three-pointer. Jones trying to close her out made just enough contact that Littlefield fell to the ground to help sell it, and an early foul on Kaylee Jones will put Littlefield at the line for three. The fortunate thing there is that Jones was able to get a piece of the ball so it never got anywhere close to the rim. Hate yeah. to allow a four-point play on that. No doubt, and you want to keep Jones out of foul trouble as much as possible. Littlefield bails you out by missing the free throw. Littlefield averages 14 a game. She and Rush, the two primary scorers, Rush averages 14 and a half. Second free throw is good. And one more coming up for Cunningham. This is a Princeton team that doesn't shoot a lot of free throws. They only average about 10 a game, but they shoot 75% from the stripe as a team. Littlefield hits the second in the game of free throws. Princeton leads 2-1, 30 seconds in. Littlefield will pick Goff up, full court, as she comes up trying to force Goff left. Pass will go to Peyton Williams on the wing. Now back to Goff. Goff at the top of the circle, dribbling left wing. Left wing pulls up, hits an eight-foot jumper. And the Wildcats up three to two. Well, and there is an example there of the pinch post offense for K-State. Able to run, run off the defender. Both defenders go with the cutter. Goff keeps the dribble alive. Easy jump, mid-range jumper. Littlefield holding and waiting on the right wing. Now down to the corner to Cunningham, working against Beard. Up top it goes to Jordan. Driving on Williams, goes in with a layup, that'll miss. Jones cleans up the glass. This is not a great rebounding team either in Princeton, so you would figure, at least on paper, K-State will have a chance to win another rebounding war. 
Beard, top of the circle, picks up for dribble, right side to Ranky, who touches it for the first time. Goff dribbles down to the right corner, lucky to get Jones isolated. Pass goes into Kaylee. She'll go up and score. And K-State up 5-2. Well, so far, Kayla Goff has been way more active than she was yesterday. And I think a lot of it has to do with poor, de of poor defense. <laughs> yeah. Not being hounded the entirety of the time. Dribble drive, left lane line by Stone, and a late whistle and a foul. Jones caught on her hip, tried to go for the blocked shot, and that's going to be two quick fouls on Kaylee Jones. Our officials today, Brad Maxey, Carlina Tobin, who we saw yesterday, and Marty Cook. I don't think Jeff Biddy was overly pleased at that call. He's talking with Marty Cook now on the far side. Jones has two quick fouls. And to the free throw line is... Stone, Grace Stone is a freshman out of New York who will make the first. And here comes Chrissy Carr into the game for the Wildcats in for Jones. K-State gets, gets smaller now. Williams will be essentially running in the center spot. And Jeff Biddy indicated, at least the thought was, that they would only go zone if Mary Lakes or Ashley Ray came into the game. Second free throw is good by Stone, and that was to protect them, trying to guard these very short players that are running around out on the court for Princeton, although Insbo is in now for Princeton, the 6'5 freshman from Colorado. Lob pass going in for Peyton Williams and a whistle away from the ball. Williams was bracketed by three Tigers, and somebody grabbed her. <laughs> just pick a number. <laughs> that will be on Insbo, who just came into the game. Kira Insbo, 6'5, two-time all-conference pick, out of Lakewood, Colorado. Beard over left side to Goff, trying to feed it down to Carr, and the ball kicked out by Rush. 5-4, K-State, 7.39 to go in this first period. Inbound play, Ranky trying to come to the near corner. Instead, it goes out to the right baseline. Williams, long jumper, won't hit it. Nobody there to rebound. Princeton coming away with the basketball. Up the court it goes quickly. Rush, pull up jumper, no, rebound, Ranky for K-State. Cats dodge a bullet, as that was a wide open shot for Princeton. Somebody got lost as to who their man was coming back down the court. Ranky on the far right side for the Wildcats. K-State still hopeful to get Ranky Carr going from beyond the arc. Williams, a beautiful move, goes right around Insbo, driving to the basket is fouled. She'll head to the free throw line. A little bit of a Euro step there from Peyton Williams after the head fake to get Emsbo up in the air. The next defender tried to take a charge. Williams went actively around her, unable to establish the position a second time, blocking foul. Cunningham was the guilty party there. So Williams now to the free throw line. Nine straight double figure games for Peyton Williams dating back to last year. And to hear Jeff Mitty talk about it, she's not even close to being in basketball shape. It's the mental reps, the physical reps. Williams will miss the second. She had 10 points, six boards in only 25 minutes yesterday against DePaul. Six to four, Wildcats in front. Six minutes, 55 seconds to go first quarter. K-State Princeton. Littlefield driving hard right side. Bump on the shot by Jason Beard. And that last free throw miss for Peyton Williams ends a streak, school record streak of 38 in a row for Williams dating back to last year's game at Texas in the middle of February. How about that? Littlefield at the free throw line again and she'll make the first. And so far a lot of fouls being called. Pretty tight which is surprising. Yesterday against DePaul there were no whistles with DePaul just lighting up the Wildcats defensively. Littlefield makes both free throws and gives the game its first tie. At six 6.45 to go, first quarter. Carr driving baseline, strong take to the basket, can't hit the shot. Ball comes caroming out of there to Princeton. Cunningham starts to drive, feeds it down into Insbo, working against Williams, up and under move, wild shot. Peyton collars the loose ball. Goff, long pass ahead, looking for Ranky on the right wing. Now back to Kayla, 6.6, 6.23 to go, first quarter. Wildcats with the basketball, Beard, trying to get it over left side, it goes to Carr. Wildcats, Carr holding and waiting. The freshman fires right elbow to Williams. She'll take that jumper. It'll miss. Rebound, Beard trying to track it down. Flips it back in, but her teammates had already recovered to go back down the court. There's nobody there except Orange Shirts. Into the lane. 
Gray Stone fade away outside and the three pointer is good. Rush hits the three ball. She hit four against the Wildcats in Manhattan back in 2016 and had five here yesterday. And it's 9-6 Tigers. Carr to Beard, now to Williams, back to Jason. Beard down to the right baseline. She'll pull up for a long jumper, that'll rattle home. Tough shot for Beard. Just inside the three-point line on the baseline. And she was able to get her feet under her with the gathering dribble. Defender gave her all the space she needed. She knocks it down. 9-8, Wildcats down a point. Princeton with it. Stone, top of the circle, got buried in the air, drives, and a whistle before in. And another foul. My goodness. Beard gets her second foul. That's already the fourth on K-State. And some of it might just be fatigue here, Brian. Yep. K-State's just not moving their feet real well, and they're not communicating on the defensive end. Again, you're playing man-to-man, -man, so you're a little bit tighter up on people than you were in the zone. But Beard now is going to come out with two fouls. So Jones and Beard both with two. So your two primary rebounders are out. K-State losing somebody here in the corner. Three-pointer up by Cunningham. Wide open. She'll hit it. Wildcats switch defensively, but had brought in Savvy Simmons. And with Simmons out on the court, along with Carr, a pair of freshmen, they get confused as to who is guarding who. Mary Legs at the right elbow. Will take a long jumper. That'll miss badly off the right side. And the rebound to Princeton. K-State down 12-8. Tigers with the ball. Inside it goes. Somehow, Gray Stone gets wide open. And Mary Legs not getting back. Sees it get laid in. It's 14-8. Jeff Benny calls a timeout. We'll take a break as well. 12-8 Princeton. 14-8 Princeton when we return to the K-State Sports Network from Learfield. Wildcats come out of the timeout. Dribble drive by Sally Simmons results in a foul. The fourth on Princeton. So both teams now with four fouls. Cunningham gets her second. And the Wildcats will trigger it in. Down six. 14-8. 428 to go in this first quarter. Williams backing down her man in the paint. Up and under move. Gets two defenders in the air. And she'll score underneath them. First basket for Williams. Makes it 14-10. And ends a little 5-0 run there by this Princeton squad. K-State into a zone with Ashley Ray now into the game in place of Lakes. Littlefield on the near wing. Let's go with open three-pointer. In and out, no good. The rebound to Rush of Princeton, an offensive board. K-State scrambling a bit to get back home defensively. Littlefield calling for the ball in the corner. Steps around a defender, passes through the zone over left side. The ball deflected by Simmons down to the ground. Picked out of there by Goff. And Goff trying to race out. Got 
dropped on by Stone. Stone was falling to the ground and kind of clipped Goff as she was out and running for a fast break. With the ankle and knee issues that Goff has been dealing with, it was, it was a good thing that she was able to escape from that and not have Stone land right directly on her leg. No doubt. Heart is in your throat Yeah, on that one. Looks like it was the other foot, though that it's not been the left foot in the left leg that's been the issue for Stone or for Goff. Two free throws as that's the fifth foul already in this first period. So Goff to the free throw line will make the first. Been a little bit foul heavy here to start on day three of the tournament, as Randy indicated. Not terribly surprising as fatigue's probably settling in a little bit. Second free throw by Goff is good. Kayla, who was really dominated by DePaul. They face guarded her, double teamed her, forced her to not have the basketball for much of the day. Goff ended up with just two points on five shots. Already has four here. Stone, free throw line jumper against the zone. Plucked out of there by K-State's Ashley Ray. Good contest there from Ray coming down up from her spot on the low post. Goff finds Williams wide open underneath the basket on a drive left lane line. Williams lays it in, five points for her, and all of a sudden we're tied up. A 6-0 run by K-State. Littlefield on the near wing. Looking into the post, instead over left a rush. Back to Littlefield, down to the corner, had a man open, didn't go there. Instead to Jordan, back toward cut. K-State's car recovers and knocks the ball away. Here comes Sivens, coast to coast, late dump. Ray, four foot jumper on the baseline, not there. And Savvy fouls over the back, trying to get the rebound. Didn't look like Ray was quite ready for that pass. They may have rushed the shot still. Good mind by Simmons to get down hard to the heart of the defense as she was given that angle. And now two free throws the other way as that's the fifth foul on K-State. Well, it looked like Ray took one extra step to kind of maybe give Simmons a, a clear driving lane and was just a little bit farther out from where she wanted to be to take the shot. So Sydney Jordan at the line will make, miss the first. Jordan is out of Manassas, Virginia. Last year averaged just five points a game, a little under three rebounds a game, and this year averaging about eight points a game. Rachel Ranke has returned for K-State as Jordan will make the second free throw. Free throws have really been the name of the game. Wildcats are four of six, Princeton seven of nine. 15-14, Tigers. That free throw ends a 6-0 run by K-State. Carr on the near wing, one-on-one, -on -one being defended there by McKenna Hare. And it goes to Goff. Goff trying to avoid a tie-up. Back out to Carr. It's a three-pointer on its way. It's good for Chrissy Carr. The first three of the game for K-State goes down. And it's 17-15 in favor of the Wildcats. Littlefield with a drive and a kick. The answer three by McKenna Hare. No. Rebound Williams for K-State. Up the court it goes. Back to Carr. Heat check. Another three-pointer. In and out. No. The rebound taken away by Princeton. Carr just a victim of these rims in this tournament. At least six of her threes have rattled in and out. Perhaps a little too quick on that three-point shot. Necessarily not open. Rush on the dribble drive. Late bounce pass. Jordan underneath the basket. Back to Rush. Six foot slammed off the rim. but won't go. Rebound. Ranky trying to bat it off a Tiger. Had it go out of bounds. And it is 2K State. Great hustle play there from Ranky, it's probably not gonna show up in the stats as a uh, defensive rebound for her, but it, it's just a great play. Kayla Goff just went over to the bench and shed her knee brace on that left knee. May have been, it looked like she was messing with one of the latches, like it wasn't working right. So Becca Fitzgerald will take a look at that. Goff will come up the court without that brace. Over to the right side of Ranky. Pass underneath, looking for Goff. It's deflected out by Littlefield of Princeton. 17-15 Cats, a minute 38 to go in this first quarter. Now we've seen that a few times here this season that Goff isn't necessarily established in the post on that swing screen, but they're still trying to throw it into her. And I think she'd rather have her feet set on that play. Carr driving left lot, goes all the way into the basket and leans in and scores. And Chrissy Carr has made an impact off the bench. Five points. King State up by four. 19-15, a minute 20 to go with the first. Littlefield off a high pick and roll. Goes over to left side. Pass out left. Stolen by Ranky. Pass long ahead and headed for Goff. Intercepted by Littlefield. Ranky saw it late. 
Littlefield stops at the free throw line, pulls up, hits it, misses the jumper, and ranking another rebound. Goff will get it back. Looks at Jeff Minnie, sets up the offense. A minute to go in this first quarter, 19-15 K-State. Ranky with it on the right side. Now to Williams, near the top of the circle. Payton with a few dribbles, waiting for somebody to move. Waiting for Ranky to go to the back door. She'll get it right block, go up, miss the shot, hard foul, and Ranky will go into the free throw line. K-State now should, with that opportunity, should be able to get a second chance here and, and run the clock out of the first quarter after Princeton's possession. Second foul on center Sydney Jordan. So starting center Sydney Jordan with six foot has two fouls and Ranky to the free throw line. Rachel already with three rebounds in the quarter. She'll make the first free throw. One more coming up. So both teams going to be living at the line it would appear today. Williams will get a breather here with 43.6 seconds left in the quarter. Savvy Simmons has returned. Ashley Ray back in there for K-State. One more coming up. Again, Jason Beard, Kaylee Jones, each with two fouls in the first few minutes. Relegated to the bench. Ranky makes both free throws. And it's the Cats up 21-15. They're on a 7-0 run, part of a larger 13-3 run. Final 35 seconds of the first quarter, up 21-15. Littlefield trying to wind this one down. Shot clock is now at 10, the game clock at 23 seconds. Littlefield into the lane, driving down to the corner. Shot clock at five, she'll fade away from 17, won't hit it, the rebound somehow lands back underneath the basket with Princeton. Ray doing a great job of defending and three seconds called on Sydney Boyer, a backup forward who couldn't quite find an angle against Big Ashley Ray. Good job of Ray, of just holding her position, not overreacting to all the ball fakes and movement that the offensive player for Princeton was trying to accomplish down there. Goff brings the ball up the court, under 10 seconds to go in the quarter. Goff crosses over, gets to the left elbow, rises up, shoots, back iron, no good. Rebound Princeton, and that'll end the quarter. Kansas State with a 7-0 run to end the frame, part of a larger 13-3 run, leads 21-15 at the end of the first quarter on the K-State Sports Network from Learfield. Second quarter starts with Princeton hitting the first basket of the second quarter. Nina Young, a freshman off the bench, hit the jumper from mid-range against the Wildcats zone defense. And the Wildcats see their quick run of a 7-0 blitz to end that quarter in 13-3. Quelled a bit. 21-17 to Wildcats. K-State again playing without Jones, without Beard, both 
with foul trouble here in this first half, have two quick fouls. Actually, Ray getting a lot of playing time of the first quarter. The Cats have played pretty well, switching back to a zone defense. Up top, Carr, top of the circle, three-pointer off the front iron, couldn't hit it. Carr hit a three-pointer her first, but has missed two since. Here come the Tigers underneath. Reverse layup by Boyer is missed and a foul on Ashley Ray. Been a lot of fouls in this game as both teams playing their third game in three days. Boyer to the free throw line for Princeton. Tigers have hit seven of nine free throws. K-State six of eight. And Boyer will get her first two. And the K-State bench frustrated with both Williams and Ray on that last play because they're getting beat down the floor. An unusual to see. And again, fatigue, you would think, part of this. Second free throw by Boyer goes. And the sophomore, who didn't play a whole lot last year, averages about 14 minutes a game this year, makes both. She's playing center right now against Ray. It's 6-1 and probably give it up at least 20, 30 pounds. Just a blade-thin center. Ranky, top of the circle, had Carr over to her right. Ranky will drive instead and score. Ranky's got four. Good aggressive take by the sophomore, not settling for the outside shot. 23 19, 8 30 to go, second quarter. Well, the way this game is being played, might as well go to the rim because it may be a foul call. You got to get Princeton in foul trouble as well. Exactly right. Rush clangs a three pointer off the backboard and the rebound loose to K State. 23 19, Wildcats, 8 20 to go in the second quarter. Goff between the legs and the dribble. Shovels out to Ranky. Fadeaway three pointer right side, way off the mark. Williams weak side rebound, couldn't get it. And the Tigers' Littlefield comes away with the ball. Princeton in transition. Shovels out, it's Rush, another open three. This one in and out, no good of the rebound to Goff. A, do a bullet dodged big time there by K-State. Goff across midcourt, looking up ahead now. Eight minute mark of the second quarter. Jones and Beard have come back to the scores table for K-State. Pick and pop, going to Williams, had an open three, didn't take it. And Jeff Mitty all over Peyton Williams about not shooting that shot. Especially against a smaller defender who could have risen right over the top of her. Baseline drive by Young, flips out to Littlefield. She'll shoot a three, and swish. The Cats get pay, uh, hit painfully on the other end. Should have been a six-point swing there. Instead, it's a one-point game, 23-22. K-State's lead down to one. Williams near the top of the circle. Back to Goff. Goff stepping around a defender over to the right side to Ranky, trying to get it into Ray. Skipped over instead to Carr. Carr with a head of steam, driving baseline, drives hard to the basket, draws contact, and will head to the free throw line. Another foul called against the Tigers. Their first in this quarter, but the seventh of the game already on Princeton. And that'll be on Rush, her first. Carr to the line to shoot two free throws, has five points, and she'll miss the first. Carr is four of seven at the line this year. Ranky and Ray are going to come out. Beard and Jones are going to come in. So Jeff Mitty rolling the dice a little bit with two forwards with a pair of fouls. It'll be interesting to see with this lineup now to if they stay in the zone defense or play man with those both foul trouble laden players. Great point. K-State started the game in man. And the Cats will stay in zone. Zone has worked, it appears. Maybe just need a little bit quicker closeouts on ball reversals. Littlefield. Into the lane, over the left side it goes to Young. K-State quickly shuts her down on a three-pointer. Up top to Boyer. Littlefield to her right. Boyer takes a line drive shot from just inside the top of the circle, and it drives it and goes home. 24 all, 6.45 to go, second quarter. Goff. Over on the right side, trying to get Jones isolated. Instead up to Williams. Peyton hands it off to Beard. Bumped by Young, 6.30 to go in the half. Shot clock at 10. Beard making something happen, driving in the lane and a whistle and a charging foul called on K-State. And that's gonna be number three on Beard. Boy, it really did not look like the defender was there on time at all. Looked like it slid in late while Beard was in the air. You're not allowed anymore to slide in while a player is in the air. You have to have already established position before they leave their feet. I'd agree with you. At the naked eye, it looked like that was someone had slid in underneath Beard, but 
Either way, it's the third foul. She's to the bench. Savvy Sibbins now into the game for K-State. Up top with Goff, Carr, Jones, and Williams on the base of this 2-3 zone. 6.23 to go, second period, 24 even up. Princeton has hit three of seven threes and 23 in three days. Littlefield on the right wing. Skip pass over to Boyer. Dribbles into the free throw line area. Over right side, Littlefield goes up. Hits a three and is fouled by Carr. A four-point play chance. Well, you saw it earlier. Littlefield's going to fall if anyone's near her. And Carr made a freshman mistake running at Littlefield and not peeling off soon enough. She commits the personal foul and the taboo of putting Littlefield at the line for a four-point play. And Littlefield finishes it off. She's got 11 already. And Princeton now up 28-24 on K-State. A 6-0 run here by the Tigers. Part of a larger 13-3 run. Simmons brings the ball up the court. Finds Goff. Over back to Savvy. Williams flashing through the paint. Couldn't get it. Back to Kayla. Op over left to Jones. Hand off to Goff. Shoots a long three that misses back iron. And the rebound of the Tigers. K-State doesn't seem to quite have that burst. Here in game three in three days of the tournament. Littlefield driving to the lane, fires it out high. Boyer, late pass out right, Cunningham. Cunningham will back out. Stop at the keyhole, fire to the corner to Littlefield. Littlefield into the lane, jump pass right. Cunningham along two, that's going to be good. Four, the last five have gone down for the Tigers, and they're up 30-24 to 24 on an 8-0 run. Five minutes to go before the half. Carr on the left side for K-State. Spinning on the baseline, facing a double team and drawing contact. She'll get to the free throw line. Foul caught on, Siri or on Princeton. And the Tigers' second foul will put Carr to the line for the second time. That'll be on Boyer. It's her first. It's good to see the Cars come into the game and, and not just establish herself behind the three-point line. She's actively looking to get to the rim. This has led to a to her getting her third and fourth free throw opportunities of the day. I think both her and Ranky both look like they have done that today, driving to the basket instead of taking three-point shots. K-State's taken five threes, three of them by Carr. She hit her first and then had two wide-open looks after that she did not make. She hits both free throws here and has eight points to lead K-State. Carr will stay in. Goff will come out. Laura Mackey is in for K-State. So K-State going deeper into the bench, trying to help out with the fatigue factor. Five-minute mark here in the second quarter. 30-26 to 26 in favor of Princeton. With this Littlefield. lineup, Carr is probably going to be the point guard. Left side three-pointer is good for Gabrielle Rush. 33-26. Rush's second three. Remember, she hit five yesterday. Here's Carr running the point. Strong take right side, fading away. Wild shot, couldn't hit it. Rebound Princeton. 4.35 to go, second quarter. 33-26 Tigers. Outlet right side. Nina Young, a guarded three-pointer by Mackey. That'll miss badly. Out of bounds to K-State when we come back. 4.27 to go, second quarter. Cats down seven, 33-26. On the K-State Sports Network from their field.
Kansas State down 33-26, second quarter. Wildcats with a basketball. They've been outscored 18-5 in this quarter. Laura Mackey trying to get it down to the post. Shot clock winding down. She'll find Peyton Williams. Williams reversing up underneath the hoop. Scores for K-State. Wildcats had hit just one of their first five shots in this quarter, but now finally get a basket to make it 33-28. Again, they've already given up 18 in this quarter, six of nine shooting for Princeton, including three three-pointers. Littlefield looking for a fourth from the corner. That'll miss long, and the rebound out of bounds to Princeton off of Carr. Goff returning for K-State in place of Laura Mackey, who got some early time today for K-State. Inbound play, Princeton will go to the right corner. Young nearly threw it away and now does. I'm going to say Jones touched it as it came to the baseline. It'll stay with the Tigers. Might be the right call. Jones playing with two fouls. Beard has two, now three. Beard to the bench. Cunningham holding it out high. Man-to-man -man defense, or zone defense, I should say, by K-State. Jones steps in front of a pass in the paint for Littlefield and picks it off. Goff, full head of steam, coming the other way. Shovels out the car. Didn't take the three, backs it out over right. Ranky fakes the three-pointer, trying to get loose. Looking for Williams now, goes to the right wing. Peyton has an open three-point shot, but is looking to pass. Goes to Goff, fired into Jones. Turn around left hand, hook shot off the rim, no. And the rebound to Princeton. Three minutes to go here before the half. Rush, a strong take down to the baseline. Kicks out to Boyer. Back down to the corner to Rush. Guarded three-pointer is up and good. Nine for Gabby Rush. And it's 36-28. 21 points in the corner here by Princeton. 2.40 to go in the second. And they lead by eight points. Carr on the left side for K-State. Thought about a quick shot, goes to Goff. Fired into Jones, again with the left hand. Missed the shot, rebound, Princeton. Couple of left-handed looks for Jones that normally she makes. Driving a kick out right side. Littlefield, let's go a three-pointer. It's short, rebound, Carr for K-State. Carr trying to get the ball, and Littlefield commits the personal foul coming in. That's the third on the Tigers, first on Littlefield. Well, K-State has done what they wanted to do uh, offensively. They've got the ball into the post a number of times here in this quarter, just unable to get it to fall. And now K-State needs an inbounder to help Goff. Thinking back to Jones' defense there on Littlefield in the corner, running at her, the perfect closeout did not carry her moment, momentum into Littlefield and then and make sure she doesn't get the rebound. One thing I'd say though, did not box her out. No. Nope. Littlefield was able to chase down her own miss there. Unf unfortunately, Fakely. she fouled Carr. Yep, Carr got in there instead. Williams turns at the free throw line, shoots and scores. Over her left shoulder, Peyton Williams has nine, nearing double figures again. That cuts the gap to six. 36 to 30. Can't stay trying to climb back in it. They led by six at the end of the first quarter, but then got down big here in the second. Trailing by as many as eight. Nina Young, let's go a deep three. Nothing but net. That was at least three feet behind the arc. And Young out of California, a first team All State pick, makes it 39 30. Princeton, Goff at the free throw line. Nowhere to go out to Ranky. Rachel starting to drive right wing. It has to be turned around. Now to Carr, Christie into the lane, jump stop, goes up with a shot, no, and a foul on the Tigers. The foul on the Tigers is the fourth on Princeton, stops the clock with a minute 17 to go in the second. And the foul is on Littlefield, it's her second. Carr to back to the free throw line where she's three of four. So Carr nearing double figures. This will be her second straight game coming off the bench. Yesterday, six points, two of nine shooting, five boards, which is a new season high for her. A couple of blocks, she'll miss this free throw, one more coming up. Wildcat fans with each and every three point make by the Wildcats this season, our Powercat Health Partners, Stormont Vale Health and the Kansas Health Foundation are collectively donating $30 to a community health project. Learn more about eating healthier, living better, and exercising regularly and enter to win great prizes at kstatesports.com backslash health. Carr makes the second, she has nine points. 39-31, a minute eight to go before the half. Princeton by eight. Tigers also with the basketball, Young. 
into the high post to Boyer. Fakes the shot, gives to Rush. Rush will drive all the way through the paint. Over left it goes to Littlefield. Shovel back up top to Cunningham. Shot clock at seven. Down to the corner. Littlefield gets around Mackey. Nowhere to go. Triple team. Boyer out with a three-point look. That short, wrong rebound comes to Goff of K-State. Final 45 seconds of the quarter. Pass ahead. Collar by Mackey on the block. Out to Goff. Seeing Peyton Williams open, Goff will have to circle back around. Princeton defense recovers. Here's Mackey at the left elbow. She'll drive in the paint, backing down her man, out to Ranky. Guarded three, swish for Rachel Ranky. Ranky shot that one with a lot of confidence. Left the hand up in the air and was even backpedaling before it got to the basket. Caught that one in a perfect spot, coming right out of the paint, almost like it was off the gun. Kansas State, 39-34, down five with 10 seconds to go. Littlefield, an answer three-pointer. Answering back is Littlefield, 14 points for Littlefield, and the first half will end with Princeton totaling up 27 points in this quarter, hitting six of 12 from behind the arc against that zone defense of K-State. 42 to 34 at the half in favor of the Tigers on the K-State Sports Network from Learfield.
K-State starts with a basketball here to begin the third quarter. One change in the lineup. No beard. Instead, Kansas State's Chrissy Carr will start the second half. But a good start to the second half as Rachel Ranke on a back cut. Gets Princeton beat to the bucket. Nine points for Ranke. And it's 42-36. Wildcats will stay in their 2-3 zone defense. They did see improvement here in slowing down Princeton. They just gave up too many threes that were made. Jones blocks the shot on the lane of Cunningham, but it lands back with Princeton. Back cut intended for Jordan. The pass locked loose and picked up by Payton. Turnover forced by the defense. K-State quickly up the court. Here's Carr right side. Transition three. Back iron not there. The rebound, Payton Williams. Outlets back to Goff. K-State two of seven from behind the arc. And Carr, one of four, hit her first, but has missed three straight sets. Now to Goff as King State lines up their offense, trying to get Jones in the post. Goff lobbing it in for Jones, catching in the paint. She's fouled from behind by Cunningham. As promised elsewhere in the Big 12 Conference, a full schedule of games today as tournament play continues in Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving tournaments across the country. Texas will be taking on Michigan today down in Florida. West Virginia against Eastern Kentucky. Baylor against Georgetown. Inbound play. Ranky a three-pointer off the mark. Rebound to Princeton inside. And back the other way come the Tigers. Quick three by Rush. Line drive of the basket will miss. Tipped by Jones. Right to Rush of Princeton and a reset for the Tigers. Into the paint it goes. Kick out to Cunningham. She'll shoot a top of the circle three. That'll miss. Rebound Jones for K-State. Surely the Tigers can't keep up 50% three-point shooting all game, and they missed their first few here to begin in the third quarter. No, it's two really good defensive possessions, though, from K-State. Jones misses from point blank on the right side, going up for the rebound, and the ball knocked out. Peyton Williams had it, and it got ripped out of her hands by a Princeton Tiger. Jeff Mitty and the Wildcats all saying that that's not at all, but Williams just stopped, didn't even go for the ball, thinking it was going to be their ball, but... The backside official, Marty Cook, said he didn't see it. And Brad Maxey, who was the lead official, was confident that he thought Peyton touched it last. So it is Tiger basketball against the zone. 8-10 to go third quarter. Cats down six. Stone trying to pass inside. It's ripped away by Kayla Goff. Like a defensive lineman going up to catch the pass. And now Goff, the other way, will go all the way to the basket and lay it in. 42-38, K-State climbs to within four. It's three scoreless possessions so far for Princeton. K-State's defense looking a lot more locked in here so far. Remember, Princeton led DePaul at the half, but couldn't hang on. They led by as many as 15 against DePaul. Out to Littlefield, guarded three-pointer. It's off the front iron, and a rebound. Jones able to get it away from Jordan. Here come the Wildcats. Goff, top of the circle. Goes over left, feeds it inside low to Williams. Peyton backing down, goes up, had it stripped, and a foul is called on the Tigers. Second foul on Princeton. And they're going to give Williams two free throws. Jordan gets her third. So now Cunningham and Jordan needs two starters with three fouls for Princeton. Peyton Williams to the stripe. And she'll make the first. And that puts Williams in double figures for the 10th straight game dating back to last year. All five games she's played this season. Second free throw coming up for Peyton, who had 10 points against DePaul, 14 and eight against Syracuse. She also had a career high six assists against the Orange. She is three of four at the line, making the second. And it's a two point game. 42 to 40, the Wildcats with a 6-0 run here to begin the third. Littlefield dealing with Goff over to the right side to Young, who's coming off the bench. Now to Rush at the right elbow. K-State swiping at the basketball as Rush goes in on Jones and will score on the left side layup. 11 for Rush. It's her first two-point hoop. Carr quickly back the other way, driving hard to the block. Fades away, shoots, missed. Jones, the offensive rebound, shoveling it out to a teammate. It gets eventually to Ranky. 44-40 Princeton, 6.50 to go third quarter. Goff has Williams top of the circle. She'll line it up, shoot a three-pointer, swish! The shot that K-State's been asking Peyton to shoot, she does. She's two of four behind the arc this year. It's a one-point game. 44-43. to 43. If the traditional three-point shooters for K-State aren't going to get it done, it's time for Williams to step out and start shooting it. No doubt. Answer three by Boyer off the bench for Pr Princeton will miss. Jones another rebound. 
Wildcats come up the court, down only one. Lob ahead goes to Jones running the court. She loses the basketball on the dribble, and it's picked out of there by Young of Princeton. Unforced error by the Cats. Littlefield quickly down to the corner to rush around the double team. Passes baseline to Boyer. She'll go up. Shot blocked out of there by Kaylee Jones. Picked out of there by Kansas State's Chris Carr. It or Christi, Chrissy Carr. Almost a jump ball there with as much possession as both Boyer and Jones had there. Luckily, the ball was able to bounce off the floor and Carr got it. Lob going for Williams, and Williams will reverse it up and in, but they'll get a foul before that on Young. He was trying to front Williams. That'll be the third on the Tigers. Not a shooting foul. K-State will play it in underneath the basket. 5.44 to go third quarter. K-State down one, 44 to 43. Really Goth wanted to hit Williams quickly on the right wing for a three, but Peyton started to go inside. Ranky over left side to Goff. Goff into the lane and swiped out and fouled by Princeton. That's already four fouls on the Tigers. We're five minutes, 38 seconds away from the end of the period. Well, Sydney Jordan and Time out, by Kane, time out by Princeton. We'll take it as well. Hold that thought, Randy. 5.38 to go in the third. 44-43. Princeton on the K-State Sports Network from Learfield. Wildcats with the basketball. Chrissy Carr left elbow jumper. Nothing but net right out of the timeout. And the Wildcats are back in front 45-44. Brian Smoller, Grandy Peterson back with you here at the Cancun Challenge. K-State led by six early, but then got hit with a massive 27-13 second quarter by Princeton to fall behind by nine. They've come all the way back to take the lead with an 11-2 start here in the third. Five-minute mark of this third quarter. Rush on a dribble drive, pass the defense, blocked from behind by Williams, and on the follow, somebody caught a Tiger on a putback attempt. Cunningham looked like the one that was down there to go up with the shot, and the foul is on Ranky. First foul on K-State of the third quarter, and two free throws coming up for Julia Cunningham, who's a freshman out of New Jersey. Five points of the game for Cunningham. She has two free throws, and she'll miss the first. So one more to tie the game. Tigers are 10 of 13 at the stripe. K-State 12 of 16. Cunningham will make the second and has six points, and we are tied up, 45 apiece. Peyton Williams brings the ball up as Littlefield denies Goff the basketball. Now Goff has it on the right side. Waiting for the traffic to clear. They lob into Jones. Goes up, shot, missed, but a foul call by Princeton. And it could be on Cunningham, and it could be her fourth. It's the fifth foul on the Tigers. Regardless, the two free throws coming up for Jones. 
Right. And the foul is indeed on Cunningham. It's her fourth time out on the floor. Kansas State all tied with Princeton at 45. We're back after this word from your local stations on the K-State Sports Network from Learfield. Kaylee Jones hits one of two free throws, and then at the other end, Kayla Goth with a steal, feeds ahead to Carr, she'll go in, lay it up, and score 13 for Carr, a new career best, and the Wildcats up 48 to 45 on a 14 to three run. That's the second time Goth's length has been able to force a steal here in the third quarter, Littlefield, and the third time. And she does it again, Littlefield's exit pass out of the lane, picked away by Goth. Ahead to Ranky, three-pointer well short, and the rebound to the Tigers. Both teams starting to leave shots a little short now as fatigue settling in. Third game in three days for both. Boyer crossed the pass of paint to Ensbo. Goes to Young, who couldn't quite handle it clean. Out to Rush. Rush thought about a step back three instead of the Boyer. And the Tigers now settle into the half court. Skip pass over left to Young. Trying to get the 6-5 Ensbo a pass against the zone inside. Instead of turnover out high. Picked away by Carr. Two-man game with Goff. Carr sells the contact as she goes up for the shot. And she'll get to the free throw line. Sixth foul on the Tigers, third on Littlefield, and Carr two free throws. Well, that's the right play there from Carr. Don't give it up to Goth. Go right at Littlefield, force the foul. Now Littlefield has three fouls. So to recap here, Princeton, Sidney Jordan with three fouls. Julia Cunningham with four fouls. Littlefield with three fouls. Carr misses the first. You know, and in this quarter, Brian, Kansas State has ru been running their offense a lot faster. Everything between the passing and the cutting, everybody has been on the same page here, and they've been able to clear out some space for the interior with Jones and Williams being able to do a little bit more damage. Second free throw by Carr will rim out, and the rebound to Princeton. Another in and out shot for Carr. She's seen plenty of those the last of lifetime. Littlefield gets around Goff, goes in on Jones. Wild shot, misses, rebound Williams. 48-45 K-State, Wildcats a 14-3 third quarter right now against Princeton. They've held the Tigers to one of nine shooting. Goth up top, Payton. Payton steps around the defender, dribbles right lane, right lane, blah, right lane line into a double team, goes up over the top of it and scores anyway. 16 points for Williams, who's likely headed to all tournament team honors. 50-45 K-State down or up five now after trailing by nine early. Littlefield driving through the paint over to the left corner. Skips the pass right side to Boyer. Trying to get it into Insbo. Back to Boyer. Bounce speed down to the 6-5 center on the baseline. She'll feed it back out to Littlefield. Shot clock under three. Littlefield through the lane. Wild shot. They're going to get a foul or is that a travel? 
Littlefield just completely out of control. And they're going to award her two free throws even. even oh, my they're goodness. They're calling Goss for the foul clear up you at the free throw line. And if that's the case, the shot wasn't even close to being attempted yet. That's a pretty tough call. Littlefield to the free throw line. Goss with the first foul of the quarter on K-State. Goss can't believe it. Jeff Mitty screaming on the near side for an official to come talk to him. And Carlina Tobin is the one that will come and visit. She's the one that made the call. And now Goss going to go talk to Carlina Tilbin about the same subject. Tobin, or uh, Littlefield made the first free throw. One more coming up, and she'll make that. Seven of eight at the line is Littlefield. She has 16, 50 to 47. So that ended what had been a remarkable start, a 16 to three start of the quarter. Still at 16 to five, two and a half minutes to go in the third. Williams, top of the circle, over left to Carr. She'll drive baseline, lean in on a 6-5. Insbo missed the shot. The rebound tapped off of Insbo to K-State. 14 on the shot clock. And Carr right now athletic enough to drive and create something, but you wanted to get to the point where she passes that ball if she is guarded like that. Well, Goss was saying it was her bad. Goff, top of the circle, three. In there for Kayla Goff! Just the fourth three for K-State, only 11 tries, but they're up 53 to 47. Deep three put up by Rush, six feet behind the arc, a frustration shot by the Tigers, it goes right out of bounds. Well, and we saw in the second quarter, that's how Princeton was playing. They were shooting deep threes, off balance threes, and it was all going in, it was all great. Now here in the third quarter, nothing's going in from deep. They're really struggling to find their rhythm. K-State has outscored Princeton 19 to five in the quarter. Goff up top to Williams, looking in for Jones, has Ranky left. Williams looking for a Ranky back cut, instead Peyton to the baseline, denied, out to Goff. Swung to Beard, right side with 10 to Ranky. Lob down to Jones, double team, finds Williams, up strong, missed the shot, but a foul called on Princeton. That, that play right there is, is an example of how K-State's offense has run here in the third quarter because there's ball movement there's passing into the post the post gets the ball if they don't have the shot it comes back out there's a lot more help out on the floor right now instead of just the ball sticking in one person's hand and Williams and Jones going to work in the post right now Peyton has 17 as she makes the first of two free throws K-State women's basketball being brought to you by People State Bank serving Wildcat fans since 1897 visit them at PSBBanks.com People State Bank member FDIC equal housing lender. Williams makes both and has 18 points. She has hit five of six at the stripe. A minute 30 to go and Kansas State now at 55 to 47, their largest lead. Littlefield denied on the baseline drive, kicks out over left, hair a three point shot, no. Beard tips the rebound, it's colored by Williams. A minute 15 to play, a 21 to five third quarter by the Wildcats. Goff over on the right wing, up top it goes to Williams. They've run the same offense each time down the court. Ranky back to Goff on the baseline, finds Williams, left double jumper, yes! 20 points for Peyton Williams, her first 20 point game of the season. And it's a 10 point lead, 57-47 Cats. 50 seconds to go in the third. What a third quarter performance by Jeff Mitty's group. Rush, right elbow, skip pass over left. Littlefield wanting to drive all the way to the basket on Jones, and in one as Jones bumped her enough for the foul. Littlefield has 18 and will head to the free throw line. Offensively, with Kansas State running the same play at each time, there's three or four options out of that offense that Kansas State has been able to use here in the third quarter. Littlefield made the free throw. She has 19. 57 to 50. K State a 16 to 19 to five start to this quarter. It's now 23 to eight. Ranky a three-pointer left side. Yes. Rachel Reinke has found her shot here in Mexico. 60 to 50, K-State. 
Ranky's got a pair of threes after two yesterday. Ensbill out right side, final three seconds of this quarter. Ensbill on the block, walled off. They won't get a shot off. K State with an incredible 26 to 8 third quarter. Leads 60 to 50, headed to the fourth on the K State Sports Network from Learfield. Third quarter, lead by 10, 60-50, going to the fourth. Princeton starts with the basketball. Nina Young, a deep three-pointer, will miss off the iron. Princeton 0 of 7 from long distance here in the second half for the Wildcats with the basketball. K-State shooting out 51% from the field, and they've hit 5 of 12 threes. Goff, up top, Williams, straight on three-point look. Yes again for Peyton Williams, and she's got 23 points. That, this second half is a prime example of why she's a Katrina McLean Award watch list candidate. Williams has done it all for K-State. Two off a career high now in points scored. Back to the zone defense for K-State. Ranky's hit a couple of three-point shots. She has found her shot. She's hit four of her last eight dating back to yesterday's game. Drive by Rush. Misses the shot. Jones the rebound but got undercut a bit. The ball knocked out off Princeton to K-State. 63 to 50, Wildcats with 8.55 to go in the fourth. And a whistle with a sub for Princeton. Stone's going to go out. Cunningham has returned for the Tigers, who are looking to avoid their sixth straight loss. And it'll be Beard who will bring the ball up the court for K-State. Over left it goes to Williams. Looking for Goff, trying to get free on the post up. Peyton needs some help, so one dribble, then give to Rachel. Ranky top of the circle, now back to Goff. 14 on the shot clock as Goff resets. Directing traffic as she goes over to the right wing. Looking for Williams, the lob goes in. The ball bounces around to Peyton. No look pass to Jones. Scores! And a foul is called. Another no look special from Peyton Williams. And Jones the benefactor. I'm not sure how Williams was able to catch the initial pass from Goff. Littlefield was right there, and I thought got a hand on it, but Williams gathered it and found Jones on the weak side for the layup. Jones to the line, and the three-point play converted. She has six points today for K-State. Peyton Williams, 23 points, five rebounds, but that's her first assist, and it was a beauty. 66-50, to 50, the Wildcats pulling away now here in the fourth. Ball deflected out high. Ranky lost her footing, otherwise would have had a run out. 
Picked back up by the Tigers in the backcourt. They come to the front court. Rush, let's go a guarded three-pointer. That's out, no good off the iron. Rebound, Goff of K-State. Cats doing it all now, they feel it. Goff coming up the court, loses the basketball, gets it back, trying to wrap a pass around the defense to Princeton, and the ball kicked out off the Tigers. They'll say it's off K-State. 8.01 to play, 66 to 50, Wildcats. K-State back to the defensive end. Ranking another steal out high, and this time trying to go on the run out. She's blocked down from behind by Young. That's a foul by Princeton. Sydney, Jordan, I should say. Yeah, Sydney Jordan just has not been involved at all in this game today. Ten minutes played, four fouls, 0 of 1. Timeout on the floor by Princeton, 66 to 50, 7.51 to go when we return on the K-State Sports Network from their field. Kansas State's Chrissy Carr hammers a three-pointer from the top of the circle with the shot clock winding down, and K-State builds their lead to 69-50. to 7-10 to go in the fourth quarter. Brian Smother, Randy Peterson back with you. Carr with ninth or 16 points in the ballgame. Littlefield, a runner in the lane, and foul called, and an and-one coming for Littlefield, who has 21. It was on Jason Beard. Jason has four. What a day for K-State. Finally behind the arc, hitting the three-pointers the way we thought they might this year. Seven of 14 from long distance. Two weeks for Williams, Ranky, and Carr. Uh, and a lot of those threes are coming in rhythm. Their feet are set. It's coming in the flow of the offense. And even that last one, you could tell there was a lot of confidence when she let it go with the shot clock winding down. Littlefield will finish off the three-point play. 22 points for Littlefield, who's gone 9 of 10 at the line as well. 69 of 53. Still, the Wildcats have owned this second half in dominating form. Carr, a corner three is short, and the rebound to Princeton. 69-53. Rush down to the baseline. Littlefield goes up, has shot blocked by Peyton Williams. Littlefield gets it back. Driving left side of the lane, out to Rush. She'll shoot a three-pointer and hit. Rush has 14. 69 to 56 with the three-point shooting of the Tigers. This game is not over. Tigers had missed their first nine threes of the second half, or eight threes of the second half, before now hitting back-to-back three-point plays. One from behind the arc, one in the lane on a foul. Now a timeout by Jeff Mitty. 
Wanted to make sure that this doesn't get out of hand. 69 to 56, K-State by 13. They've led by as many as 19 points. Coming back home to Bramlage next Saturday or next weekend, K-State on Sunday, December 2nd, will host Vanderbilt at 1 o'clock. It's our first T-shirt opportunity for you fans. Exclusive women's basketball T-shirt, T-shirt ticket package includes a GA ticket and that exclusive shirt for only $10. Find out more online, kstatesports.com. K-State men's basketball in action today against Lehigh. That's at 3.30 this afternoon. And then at 6 o'clock tonight, Central Time, K-State football as the Wildcats will take on Iowa State under the lights up in Ames, Iowa. 69 to 56, the Wildcats up 13, trying to close out their trip in Cancun with a win. Ranky, right, right side three-pointer out there. Williams back taps the rebound to Carr. No look pass for Jones down on the baseline. Kaylee gives it off to her front court mate in Williams. Out high to Ranky, extra pass to Carr. Sets her feet and a three-pointer good. 19 points for Chrissy Carr off the bench today for K-State. 72 to 56 Wildcats. And it's so refreshing to finally see other teams chase our three-point shooters around on the perimeter. That Frankie baited him with an open look at the left or top of the circle, then fired it over to Carr for the open look. Rush, an answer three-pointer from the corner. Ranky gets the rebound off the miss. Four boards for Rachel with 12 points. Goff up ahead, stutter step on the dribble as she goes in front of the cat bench. Pointing and directing traffic with a catch up 16. Goff drives left side, pulls up for a jumper off the rim. No, Jordan the rebound for Princeton. Five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Littlefield driving hard in on Jones, misses the shot, the rebound, batted around back to Littlefield of Princeton. Looking to pass off to a teammate underneath. She'll go out instead to Young. Long three right side, not there. Williams snatches down the board. She has 23.6 caroms today for K-State. And you can see now teams really starting to drag as the end of this one comes close. Three games, three days. Goff to Williams. Looking for a slip string down the paint with Jones. The pass a little tardy from Williams and it's stolen away by Princeton. Back the other way come the Tigers. Littlefield in transition, an air ball of a three-pointer right to Payton. And after that 6 of 12 three-point barrage in the second quarter by the Tigers, they have gone 3 of 16 cents, or else in other quarters, I guess. Carr driving hard left side, goes in, missed the shot, tipped by Jones, not there, and the rebound of the Tigers. So both teams getting a little loose now with their offense. Four minutes to go in the game. Littlefield, a baseline take on Jones. Blocked shot by Kaylee, and the rebound out of bounds to K-State. Jones didn't even leave her feet. Kept her hands straight up in the air, and she shot it right into her hands. Good job by Jones. Had some early foul trouble, but has battled around that. Jones has three blocks, five boards, six points. Beard returns for Peyton. Nope, for Carr. Peyton will stay in. Think Williams thought she was coming out. Peyton looks like she's about at the end of her physical limit. Again, trying to get in game shape. You know, who's actually probably the fittest here on the floor right now is Beard, since she had the foul trouble. They should probably try and get her on a drive to the rim. Goff working to the baseline, shot miss. Jones one hands the rebound, saved in the corner by Beard. Jason drives baseline, hangs, shoots, missed it. Jones another rebound, but it goes out of bounds off her hands. And it's two Princeton. Uh, the two most active players on that possession are the ones that have the foul trouble in the first half for K-State. Probably a benefit right now when you look back on it. Yep, and they had the foul trouble yesterday as well. 56, uh, 72 to 56 K-State. High watermark in points for the Wildcats this year. They have been stuck on 60 or 61 pretty much all season. Baseline, Ranky misses, or Bowyer against Ranky misses the shot, rebound to Beard. Beard will bring the ball up the court for K-State. Passes left to Goff, who gets it away from a Tiger. Back to Jason. Extra feed over to Ranky. Guarded three is up. It's short. The rebound in the corner. Out of bounds to Princeton with 3.07 to go. Nice. State wants some subs here. Somebody might be a little bit dinged up. Carr is going to come in for Goff. 
Kaylee Jones slipped down here on the corner. I saw that earlier, and Jones is calling the towel guy onto the court to mop up some sweat that caused her to go down defending someone in the corner last time, last possession. Well, K-State's kind of tightened up their rotation here in the second half. They've gone with a rotation of six, and Beard is the seventh from time to time when she's out in foul trouble, and it has worked. Wildcats have dominated play. Littlefield to the baseline, nowhere to go. Outlets to Russ. Three-pointer in front of the Tiger bench will miss. Carr gets the rebound. Carr with a full head of steam. Bounce speed through traffic, and the ball kicked by the Tigers. It'll stay with K-State. Not a good pass. K-State lucky to keep it. 2.47 to go, 72 to 56, Wildcats. And she was, Carr was unguarded there. She probably would have been better off shooting a 12-foot jumper. Well, taking it as far as you can anyway. Beard waiting for the seas to part. We'll go to Ranky on the left wing. She'll shoot a guarded jumper. That goes! And a foul called on the Tigers. It's not a three, it's a two, but a long shot for Ranky and an and one chance for her. Foul on Rush is her third foul. Third on the Tigers at the quarter. Ranky for an and one at the line, and now K-State starts to sub out some players. Williams is going to come out. Savvy Simmons is in. What a day for Williams. 23 points, seven boards, couple of block shots, and one nifty assist to the line is Ranky to finish off the three-point play. She will, 15 for Rachel Ranky. That's a season high for Rachel. 75 to 56, Cats. And what will be a good RPI win, but it's all said and done. Three-pointer up and in for the left side by Boyer. Makes it 75 to 59. Savvy Simmons, Ranky Beard bringing the ball up the court against token pressure from Princeton. Now Ranky and Simmons bang into each other and the ball goes out of bounds. It'll stay with K-State, but only 22 seconds are on the clock. Only two seconds on the backcourt clock. Correct. So the Cats have got to get it across almost immediately. Beard is the catch. Lob will go to Carr near the sideline, and a foul will be called on Rush. Carr helps sell that she was pushed near the table, and the Wildcats will play it in there in the front court. Now, the shot clock will reset on the foul by Rush. That's her fourth inbound play will go to Simmons. Savvy will bring the ball up the court. Savvy's still looking for her first points as a Wildcat. See if she can get it here late. Simmons working on the right side against Littlefield. Down a car on the corner. Looking for Jones in the post. Car back up top to Beard. Beard with a little bit of a head fake. Shovels it back out to Carr. Long three on its way. Rattles in. Finally, one of those that bang around go down. Carr with her first 20-point game of her career. 22, 78-59. K-State a minute 40 to go in the fourth. Rush, a drive on Jones. Missed the shot and a late whistle. And a foul on K-State on Jones. Kind of an unnecessary contest there from Jones. Just be their high hands like you were earlier in the game. Fourth foul on Jones, rushed to the line for two. She's only shot seven free throws all season. Boyle hanging out on the perimeter, 15 points for Rush as she makes the first of two free throws. Ashley Ray, Laura Mackey in for Ranky and Jones. Wildcat fans, catch the Jeff Mitty radio show Mondays this season at 6 o'clock at Powercat Sports Grill. Coach Mitty breaks down last week's opponent, discusses upcoming games at Powercat Sports Grill, a new home for the Jeff Mitty Show. Hope to see you there. First show starts in December. 78-61, Wildcats, second free throw is good for us. 16 points for her. K-State winding this one down. Final 90 seconds of the contest. Simmons looking for Ray in the post. Picked up her dribble in a bad spot. Needs help. Now throws it in towards Ray. She'll catch. Go up. Miss the shot. Rebound Mackey, who gets it from two feet. She'll miss. Get her own rebound. Reverses it up and in. Laura Mackey scores for the second straight game. 80 to 61, Wildcats. That's just great athleticism from both Ray and Mackey. Just staying with it over and over again. Littlefield baseline, 10-foot jumper, no. Mackey, another rebound for K-State. Outlets up the car. She's got Ray running out in front, and K-State wants a timeout just to get subs in. Alisa Wiggins, Mary Lakes coming into the contest for K-State. Carr coming out along with Beard. You know, one, one thing that... Uh, 
that Coach Mitty addressed the team with was if a team is going to play poorly, don't interrupt them. And that's how Kansas State played here in the second half. Princeton just kept playing poorly over and over again, and K-State just stayed right there. They, they didn't interrupt Princeton playing bad. They have taken command in the second half, shooting 49% from the field. K-State has hit 7 of 13 behind the arc in the second half as well. Simmons with a head fake, driving to the basket. Scoop shot, no. The rebound out to Princeton. The Tigers have gone to their bench. Maggie Connolly now in, a freshman. Rush to pull up three-pointer in transition, not there. Lakes the rebound. Final 40 seconds for the Wildcats, who have hit the 80-point mark for the first time this season. K-State looking to be 20-1 and all-time under Jeff Mitty when scoring 80 points. They have hung their hat on defense. They came in as the best defensive team in this tournament. And they're looking to add to that. Final 20 seconds. Simmons dribbling out high, trying to keep it away from the defense. Fires over to Elisa Wiggins. Wiggins going down to the baseline, running layup, not, not there, taken away by the Tigers. Boy, Wiggins had an open lane, just couldn't hit. Littlefield to the other end, hanging, shooting, missing. Mackey another rebound, and that'll do it. K-State blows out Princeton with a great second half, trailed by nine in the first and made it a no-doubter in the end. 80-61 to 61 the final. K-State hammers Princeton and now heads home with a win in their packed pocket in Cancun for the first time ever. Our postgame coverage is up next on the K-State Sports Network from their field.